Let's extend our hands and blessings over the fire. Higher. Okay. Okay, deacon first. Lumen Christi, the light of Christ.
Roman Christi, the light of Christ. Lumen Christi, the light of Christ. Please remain standing, de pie, per favor, in silencio. Everyone, please stand, de pie, per favor, in este momento, in silencio.
blessing first. Your blessing, Father. Deacon Ken, may Almighty God be in your heart and on your lips that you might worthily proclaim this exaltet of our church. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound the loud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. Spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love and mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. 
This is the night that even now throughout the world set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victoriously from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity, beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to the mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, Accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which the fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, a truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wet to those of earth and the divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who came back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
May the Lord God be in your heart and on your lips that this exalted that we have sung to our Easter candle and to Christ remain in our hearts forever. Amen. If we will now extinguish our candles and if we will again turn off all the lights in the church at this time. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, 
Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. your spirit over the waters, you will renew the face of the earth. Send out your spirit over the waters, you will renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you Yeah. 
Please stand, de pie, per favor. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in ordering all of your works, may those who have been redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the very beginning except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift off your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them the column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, 
stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the mist of the sea, with the water like the wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Please stand, de pie, per favor. Let us pray. Lord God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our own day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, you now bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my Savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. For he has done glorious deeds, make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Please stand. De pie, per favor. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing for your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord, Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. El Señor esté contigo. E con tu espíritu. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and buenos noches a todos. Buenos noches. Even our deacon was speaking some Spanish tonight, which is good because the Catholic Church is a universal church. And if you look to your right, you'll see a beautiful rosary surrounding the shrine of San Isabel, the shrine of St. Elizabeth. This is a mission rosary that we pray for everyone as Catholics. The red represents North, Central, and South America and for all the Christian martyrs who brought the faith to us. The green is for the continent of Africa, the white for Europe where the Holy Father resides, yellow for the peoples of Asia, and blue for Oceania and Australia. During this Easter season, every time you come into church, look at that rosary and remember the Catholic faith is not just about me and God. It's about God giving salvation to the world. And that rosary represents the world in which we, St. Elizabeth people, are a part of. And we welcome all of you here this evening. Our readers from families who for generations were and are part of this parish, to the most newly arrived who will receive their baptism, confirmation and Eucharist. We are a complete parish from the ancient to the new, and that's what makes us thrive. And we are people who gather here tonight, not because we're perfect, but because we are sinners. That's why we are here tonight, to seek God's grace. And even the liturgy that we celebrate tonight, when lights come on early and candles don't light, we don't give up. We turn the lights off and we light the candles until they light. And it's all good because we're here in God's house. This is where you didn't call yourselves here. I didn't call you here. God himself put on your heart to be here tonight, to receive his great mercy. And this, my friends, is what we celebrate through the stories of the creation, through the exodus and the parting of the Red Sea, to God giving his gift of milk and honey to the Israelites, to God still giving to us this day. 
and we are going to receive into the church an amazing amount of people tonight. I first want to ask Pierin to please stand. Pierin is in our first grade at our school. She's going to be baptized a Catholic tonight with her mom and dad here and her mom actually embracing the church as well. So Pierin, we're gonna be calling you up shortly. And Milan, if you would stand up, Milan is in seventh grade at our school. She has asked to be Catholic. That's the evangelizing tool of our school. And mom, thank you for allowing your daughter to say yes to the faith, the faith that you first taught her, her Christian faith and belief, belief in Jesus. So we appreciate these two here. And also we have two eighth graders, Mason and um, Foster, who are gonna get their confirmation from our school today. And we thank you for that, gentlemen. And also two adults, Jose. He's going to be received into the church, already baptized as a Christian, but will become Catholic, as well as Samantha, who is a Christian, who will be received into the church as well. Four kids from our school, two adults, and then all who are being confirmed, you young people, just stand up so we see you as a group. Look at the young people who are going to receive their first Holy Communion and their confirmation. How indeed you bless our church with your presence. Please be seated. So, you want to know whether Christ rose from the dead? That's what tonight is all about. Did Jesus rise from the dead? Our faith teaches us absolutely Christ rose from the dead. That's why the church exists. That's why we are here. If that's a little difficult for you to grasp right now, that's okay. We're human beings, and even Thomas doubted in the midst of his belief, so it's okay. But I'll give you an example which might help you see the truth of our faith, that Christ indeed rose from the dead. When Christ rose from the dead, we believe that his body is with us forever. The body of Christ is whom we receive in the Holy Eucharist by a matter of faith, an act of our will, and a gift of God. But what does the church say about all of you sitting in this church tonight? Yes, you are the people of God, and yes, you are the body of Christ. That is the way the church explains the people of God. You are Christ's body. We are Christ's body in the world. Your ancestors have been believing forever, and now it's your turn to believe. Did the body of Christ rise from the dead? The answer is absolutely yes. You are the body of Christ risen from the death of Jesus on that cross. You young people are the presence of Christ in this world. Us adults are the presence of Christ in this world. We are the living body of Christ who brings God's mercy to our world through our words and through our actions and through the love of our neighbor. The faith of our faith, the gift of our faith is absolutely true. Christ rose from the dead. <clears throat> you are an example. We will receive that body and blood in just a few moments as well. Just be patient with each other. Be patient with yourself. God is working through each and every one of you each and every day. Go forward proclaiming the faith of our church that Christ is alive and well and merciful. You and I <clears throat> are witnesses to that fact. If I could have my water, which is right under that chair, I'll tell you one story. Thank you, thank you. Very good. 
Nothing like water to refresh my voice, all right? Do you believe you're the body of Christ? Yes. You are. <clears throat> so I'm going to share a story, and then we'll close it up just to make you smile, to make you laugh. I was told a story tonight about Joseph of Arimathea and Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate had Jesus crucified. Joseph of Arimathea gave his family tomb to bury Jesus. Do you know that story? Joseph of Arimathea gave his tomb. Pilate says, why would you waste your family's tomb on this man, Jesus, who died as a criminal against Rome? Why would you give up your family tomb? Joseph of Arimathea said to Pilate, I knew that he would only be spending the weekend in my family's tomb. You got that. You're listening. Even that little funny story reminds us death has no hold over Jesus, no hold over us. The Lord is risen. He is with his heavenly Father. He is with us. And very soon he's going to be on that altar his true body, to make us stronger as the body of Christ as well. Let us celebrate, and now let us welcome these new people into our church. and Father McVoy will come to the center. Joseph, come over here. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the waters of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all of his merciful help. So if everyone could please kneel at this point. If Pirin and Milan can come to the center. With their godparents. Just kneel down, Milan, kneel down. Milan, if you'll kneel on this side. Go over there. Kneel on this step. Okay. We are now going to hear a beautiful litany of the saints before these two young ladies are baptized into the Catholic Church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth, pray. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint 
Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Ta- Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Scholastica. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Savior. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Please stand, DPA. Go pour the water. Go pour, go pour. As the deacons will pour the water into the, the baptismal font, we will offer this prayer. Let us humbly invoke upon the waters of this font the grace of God the Father, the Almighty that those for, for whom they are reborn anew may be numbered among the children of Christ. O oh God, by your invisible power, accomplish a wondrous effect through the sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one, and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, whose son John, whose son was baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth blood and water, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples to go forth to baptize all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so may the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font. And holding the candle in the water, he continues, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism may rise again with him to new life. May the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord God, come down upon the waters of this font, so all who are baptized in true Christ may rise to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 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 If Pierre's family would please come forward.
Now Piran, because of her age, will be baptized, and then she will have her catechism and receive communion with her class next year and confirmation in the years to come. And so the rite we do now is for the child who will be baptized and receive the sacraments later. Pier, uh, Milan, being older, will be confirmed this night and also receive her first Holy Communion. And so the ritual for her is a bit different than for a period, and that's why you'll see it done differently. And so we continue. I asked Samantha and Chuck, what name do you give to your daughter, Perrin? And what are you asking of God's church this day for your daughter, baptism? Samantha and Chuck, you have asked your daughter to be baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of forming her in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring her up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? We do. And to the godparents, are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as a Christian mother and father? Yes. So here in the Catholic community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I will now bless you with that cross and invite your parents and your godparents to bless your forehead as well. Make the sign of the cross on her forehead. And now for, for uh, parents, parents and godparents, please respond, I do, to these questions. Okay, then Milan's family come over as well for this part. Thank you, Molly. Very good. So for the one standing before the baptismal font, answer, I do, to these questions. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Now listen to the I do's. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. My dear friends, this is our faith, now your faith. May we be proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, Pierre, put your hands here. Put your head down. You can stay. You can stay right here. This way. Pierre, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here and come back for one second. This anointing will be for her baptism. And Milan, your anointing is going to come with your confirmation, okay? God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and has welcomed you into this holy church. He now anoints you with this oil of salvation, and as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, may you share in that same gift of eternal life in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Milan, it is now your turn to be baptized. Your parents and your sponsors, your godparents, are here with you this day. And so, Milan, you are old enough to answer this question for you. Piran's parents asked and answered for her. Milan, with your mom and your godmother and your teacher behind you, is it your choice and your will that you be baptized in the Catholic Church as we have celebrated with you this night? Yes. She said yes strongly with her head shaking. That's very good. Put your hands here. Just put your head over the font. Turn to your guest. Put your hand on her shoulder. Milan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Milan is going to light her candle from the Easter candle. Walk over to Deacon Ken. Okay. Come back to your mom and to your godparents. May God Almighty the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you, Milan, a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon you the forgiveness of your sins, keep you by his grace unto eternal life. And may the same Lord, who has given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, make you forever faithful to the light of Christ. And so receive this light. May you, Milan, keep it burning brightly, until the Lord returns, so that one day you may joyfully greet him and bring your candle lighted into the glory of heaven. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Pierre, and you receive the light of Jesus Christ. May you keep this flame of faith alive in your heart so that when the Lord returns, you may go out to meet her, him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Okay. You go back to your parents. And now let us give them one more thank you for creating and making this back. You can blow that out and go back to your seats. And now for the adults, Jose, and Samantha, if you'll please approach the altar at this time. And their sponsors as well. Samantha and Jose, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsors as you have done and in the presence of this community to profess your Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. And loudly, if you will now profess your faith.
And let me read that for all to hear what they have stated. Samantha and Jose stated, I believe and profess all that the Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Samantha, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Jose, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Ginger and Deacon can come this way, turn around to the congregation, and let us welcome our newly invited Catholics. Turn to your seats. Okay, we have grown by five in just these few minutes. And this is happening in every Catholic church around the world, so our numbers are going like this. For all those who will now receive the sacrament of confirmation, please stand. It's everyone but Pierre for right now. Father, baptismal promises, renewing baptismal promises for everybody. My dear candidates, for confirmation by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and have become members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in an outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by God upon his apostles through Christ at Pentecost, and given by them to their successors, the apostles and bishops to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering and death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. And so, my dear friends, the candidates that stand before us, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on those, these candidates for confirmation, to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. And so we offer this prayer. Almighty and all-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them a new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them strength of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your divine presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The oil that Father McBoy and I have in our hands is oil blessed by our bishop just this past Thursday, excuse me, Tuesday. This is the sacred oil that will mark you forever as a confirmed Catholic the presence of Christ in our world. We will ask them, with the music playing in the background, to please come forward with their sponsors. Father McBoy and I will say to them, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. They will respond, amen. And we will say to them, peace be with you. And they will respond, and with your spirit.
So if you would just gently come out of your pews with your sponsors and please come forward.
Now, if the congregation would please stand. We have received through the waters of baptism and through the holy oil of chrism, new members into the Catholic Church. Now to everyone else in the church, this is your moment to profess your faith before God and one another, and for you to feel the waters of these new waters of baptism for yourselves to remind you of your sacredness and of your baptism. And so I ask everyone in this congregation before Father McBoy and I go about the church to sprinkle you with holy water. Do you reject sin and evil so as to live in the freedom of God's family? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, who created heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose on the third day? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And my dear friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. May we be proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us offer these prayers to our God. That the power of the resurrection fill the church, empowering each Christian to spread the good news of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of the risen Christ, which surpasses understanding, wash over our nation and world, bringing unity and harmony. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the God who led the Israelites to freedom through the Red Sea liberate victims of human trafficking and those enslaved to sin and addiction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ, who suffered death out of love for us, renew our parish this Easter and give us an even greater share of his spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women to be open to God's call to spread the good news of Jesus Christ as priests, deacons, or consecrated persons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our prayers, especially the sick, those who care for them, those who serve our country and community, and all the intentions for which we've been asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the altar. If our gift bearers would go to the center of the church, the ushers, please come forward. We will have the preparation of the altar.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with Easter gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you created all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. In fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and show forth the glory of resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory and with one voice, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand, de pie, per favor. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear us, Lord our God, we pray. Graciously be present to your people and lead those you have blessed with these heavenly mysteries of baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist to pass from former ways now to a newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment before the final blessing. I do just want to say a word of tremendous thanks. The liturgy is meant to be sung, to have music as a deep and intimate part of its celebration. And our music director, Marion Jacob, has put together ensembles for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, tonight, and tomorrow. So if the choir and the musicians will please stand in the loft, if you'd like to turn and look at the choir members that are there, and we'll put them on our social media. We thank you very, very much. And Father McBoy and Deacon Ken and Deacon Walt have obviously been here for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, tonight and tomorrow. You are blessed to have four ordained ministers, clergy, who can serve this parish. Many struggle to find one. We are blessed with four. So could we thank our ministers, our deacons, and Father for being here tonight as well. We appreciate that very much. And for Charlie and William and Joseph, they have been here through all of these services, as well as a 13-year-old man who is running our social media platform these three days, Michael. Gentlemen and ladies who also serve, we appreciate that very, very much. Um, any of you young ladies and young men who want to be altar servers, you're more than welcome um, to do so. And I want to thank those who helped deeply with Deacon Wald and Molly Roach and Father and Deacon Ken who have helped prepare these members who have come into the church tonight. It is a almost year-long process that they have been through. And so for the four of you, we appreciate the guidance that you give in helping them to prepare to receive these sacraments. So Molly, Ken, and John, and Walt, we thank you very much for doing that. Now, all of you have received your first communion and we confirmed all of you and we applauded you. Young people, now when you go to church, you can receive communion every single time. No one is going to applaud for you when you do that. <laughs> you just have to want to be here because you love God. And that's why we want you to receive your communion, because God loves you so deeply. Be here and receive often. And so that you know we are planning for next year. I've known them for about a month or two, so they know I like to make people stand up and be recognized. Robin and Andrew, please stand. They have already expressed a desire as two unbaptized people to enter into this process next August and or September and to begin a whole new class of those who want to become Catholic. We are already planning for the future of St. Elizabeth Parish. Can we just thank Robin and Andrew for their courage and want you to do that. kind of made you sign on the dotted line, all right? We hope that you'll be with us. Dylan and Mark, I'm not going to make you stand because you're still discerning, but I know you're in the church, all right? We'll welcome you also to enter into that process. Please, please stay in the church for as long as you want to take pictures. Your children are beautifully dressed. There are seven shrines and altars about this church. I and we will not close it until the last person leaves. 
So this is your home now. This is a place where we worship God. Take the pictures and make a record that this moment um, has happened. And so let us stand for God's blessing. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Go, Go forth. In. Together. <laughs> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.